The quarter end pension rebounds is here. This is why large money managers are looking to sell this week. The potential equity supply at the end of the month. Hello everyone, today our guest is popular YouTuber, financial expert and analyst, Stephen Van Metter, who in this video reveals why big money and money managers are dumping stocks to buy into safe heavens, a key video. So, if you're ready to navigate the exciting world of crypto, Bitcoin, and stocks, hit that subscribe button now. Join us on this exhilarating adventure towards financial growth and success. Don't miss out, subscribe, like, and share today. Goldman, where we pick today's story up as we take a look at their tactical flow of funds. The bottom line is sentiment is no longer bearish. It is greedy. Investors are no longer short. They're long. Retail traders are back. Liquidity is currently robust heading into the summer. Pension rebalancing, corporate repurchase blackout changes the flow of funds picture here, at least in the short term, but it'll be a little harder from here. But don't hold back. What you're saying here is a case where you're going to see retail flows and investors come and try to push this market higher. It's not going to be easy, at least not in the short term, but perhaps in a another month or so, it's going to make it even easier for them to drive stocks higher. The quarter end pension rebounds is here. This is why large money managers are looking to sell this week. The potential equity supply at the end of the month, given U.S. funded standards, is a massive 110%. The Goldman model estimates $33 billion of U.S. equities to sell for the month and quarter end from pensions. And so this is going to be the big push here. And while what they have to do is they have to sell out of their equity portfolio and they have to buy into their bond side of their portfolio to balance their portfolio out, a lot of these pensions funds roughly run a 60% equity, 40% bond allocation. So they've got to bounce that out at the end of the quarter. That's going to put a lot of selling pressure here on the markets this coming week. And we're also entering the start of the corporate blackout window. We mentioned this last week. This was coming. We're currently in an estimated blackout window, estimated to end July 28th. So we got another month of blackouts with right now 60% of the S&P 500 currently in blackout and 85, a whopping 85% estimated to be in blackout by the end of the week. So that means anyone hoping for a push from these corporates is not going to see that happen. But how about the machine positioning? We like to look at this every week over the next week we have a flat tape so this could help offset some of that pension but remember selling this is global equities 21.4 billion so only 2.6 billion to buy in the s p in a flat tape this is minimal that 33 billion is going to have an impact here in an up tape so this is what really the markets need to see investors need to see an up tape to help offset some of this at 30 billion but again global equities a lot of these pensions are heavily in the u.s notably only 1.1 billion in the the S&P. So what is this telling you as you read this report is to saying these machines are maxed out. We've been talking about this in the last week that they're at their 99 percentile. These machines have bought, bought and bought even some more. They're pretty much got their gullets full here. They've got a little tiny margin to buy a little bit more, but not a whole lot. Looking over the next month, the flat tape, 56 billion to buy. So the machine's looking to push the market higher over the next month. This will help a lot during the blackout window with a mere 5.7 billion to buy in the S&P. So what you're seeing is some of these global indices that have been down relative to the U.S. market. They're going to get some buying pressure here and an up tape, 78 billion to buy and a down tape, a whopping 194 billion to sell with 64 billion in the S&P. So if that happens over the next month, watch out below. Now let's take a look at what we're seeing here uh, in the shorter term. This is what would be one of considered a faster algorithm. We're looking at TD securities here. You'll note over 4450 to buy, under 4225 to sell on the S&P. So what does that tell you? Right now they're kind of in a dead zone. They're not really moving the market here much. They need to see equities go higher for them to kind of buy back in and push that last leg higher as the Goldman report suggested. Let's take a look at our own screen. It says momentum remains positive in the S&P. It's slowing down a little bit. The RSI is at 58. The MACD's got a negative cross, but momentum again remains positive. Our momentum timer pro report, which aggregates a bunch of these different technical signals together, smooths them out for you. Notably has 20 consecutive daily buy signals. And over the one month window and three month window, it's maxed out. So it's saying momentum is at a max level here. The six month window far right, which is not as important as the other two at a mid 
mid-size level, so it's not quite maxed out. But when you see momentum kind of pushing to extremes, which we're seeing here, you're going to expect to see some pullbacks in the terms of a rally. I think that's what we're seeing on the price chart. We'll look at that here in a moment. We are holding our March 30th buy it open call at 404.09. I'm saying this would be the part place where you want to exit if we get up to 450. Always recommend if the market's going up in your favor, raise your stop loss levels up. It's smart to do. Uh, that's how the machines kind of approach the market. Downside target at 424. Notably, our CTA timer pro. This is what we talk about a lot. Mimics that machine positioning. You'll notice it's been 100% long for a while. If you just followed this report, well, you would have been in a long time ago so here's where i think we eventually get to up here in this 450 range i think we're seeing in this rally here a bit of a pullback i was really expecting to see it kind of looked like this pattern up here where it was going to shoot higher but would notably we picked some sellers up in here now if this pulls all the way back down to this level here uh, i think 424 is where we start to see the first move down if there's a pullback it's going to pull back right into the zone right about here and then i think that we're going to see that final rally up in the 450 if for any reason it pulls all the way back down here to around 415 and find support that would be super bearish i mean i'm bearish bullish it would be super bullish so if it pulls back here find support and heads higher that would be massively bullish that's where you would definitely want to take position but any notion here that just because momentum slowing down doesn't mean price you know all of a sudden just plummets just look for a pullback here if you're looking to get in you'll find an option here by the way the cta time pro told you to buy and wait way back down here at this bottom told you to buy the pullback right here and told you to buy right in here and we'll look to give you another position here if you want to take that final move higher let's take a look at the nasdaq now the qqq rsi just like the SP, slowing down momentum remains positive the macd you know a lot of you love trading the macd so you got a negative cross would have told you to now sell if you're trading that you'll get momentum time from pro this is a rare signal and not only is it 34 consecutive daily buy signals it's maxed out across the board look at this one three six months it's maxed out we've talked about where the entry points were on our cta timer pro mind you links for both those reports are in the description below and they come with a 30-day risk-free money-back guarantee. You don't like it, just let us know. We'll refund your money. We're still holding our buy it open at 315.24. We keep telling you, price goes up, tighten your stop loss. You can always re-enter. Friday's closing 362. We're targeting 380 as our next move higher. I think that's what we're really looking for to see a peak here in the NASDAQ. Now, one of the headwinds, of course, is going to be the buyout blackout window or the buyback blackout window closing up. That's going to hurt these tech stocks a little bit. But here's where I think we get. I think you get way up here. So I believe this is a mild pullback. If it does come all the way down to around 348 and hold support, this is bullish there we go got it right this time this is bullish this thing takes this higher so again just because momentum slowing here just because a macd rolled over does not indicate the price suddenly falls off a cliff just look for a pull back here but by the way like i said this gets down to 348 and holds support there that would be another place to load some positions up to take that final move in the market higher all right, let's take a look at bonds. Of course, everyone knows I'm bullish on bonds for many reasons. Yield curve being inverted, one of them. Goldman estimates global bonds are for sale in a flat tape. However, if bonds were to rally, huge upside skew. The machines have mostly, they're not all the way sold to the downside, but they're pretty big on this. Uh, let's take a look at here again, TD Securities, under 3.6 to buy on the 10-year, over 3.8 to sell on the 10-year. So not a lot of movement here, but most likely you're going to see, as Goldman suggested, a little bit of selling there we've been talking about this rectangle pattern over the last several weeks it's formed this if you're wondering where these screenshots come from or scans comes from one of the bibles of technical analysis and in a study of patterns a rectangle is a massive reversal pattern so let's take a look at our screens first we know the momentum is positive on TLT, this being the proxy for the long bond. RSI is picking up some steam at 53. You got a MACD, has got a positive cross. 17 consecutive daily buy signals. So we're maxed out on the one month window. Remember, not long ago, this was at a buy or a sell max. All you have to do is look for these big, deep sell positions, put them on your watch list. As momentum shifts, start taking positions in. It's that simple. 
We've got a buy minimum on the three month window. So this is showing a pretty strong setup here for TLT, notably our CTA Timer Pro. Pick this move up. I've shown you the bottom of that rectangle. We'll look at that again. March 20th, we're holding our buy it open. Why? Because the other calls on the S&P and NASDAQ are up. Sometimes a trade doesn't go your way. Some people like to jump out. We're saying this one's okay to hold. All right, let's take a look at gold. Many of you know I remain bearish on gold and that view hasn't changed. How about from machine positioning, buying above 1975, selling below 1900. So traders getting no boost from gold, at least going or from the machines going into early this week. But mind you, there's a massive triple top that keeps getting rejected. That's the bear case for gold. You don't often see these when you do, should be a warning sign. Now, many people have some misunderstanding here. If you own the physical metal, that's great. And if you have reasons for owning, I'm not telling you to sell that. We're talking about this from a trading perspective. So if you do like the physical metal and you're looking for a pullback to buy more, well, we'll show you what we think here. Momentum remains negative. So RSI is now down into oversold territory, getting down there at 37. We're looking for below uh, 40, but it's getting down there. Negative cross on the MACD. We have four consecutive daily sell signals as Momentum Timer Pro uh, kind of flipped a couple buy signals, but notably sell max. So if you're trading this Momentum Timer Pro report, this should be on your hot list because the window on the one month is a max sell. So what that means is you're looking for a reversal. It doesn't mean you're trading it yet. It means you're looking for it. That should be pulling down down the three month window here pretty soon. Uh, upside target, we're holding at the 183.96, a 50 day moving average. I forgot to update my downside target. So let's go do that right now. Let's pull up the charts. I'll show you where I think this thing is headed. All right, first up, gold, and we'll look at the gold futures. Where do I think we're headed? I think you're going to get down here, um, probably right around this 168 to 170 levels where I see this next move down to. Uh, upside is the 50-day moving average, notably where that volume profile line is. So over the last year, which is a long period, 12 months, most of the selling right up here. I know, I know people say, hey, look, I'm bullish on this. Look, long-term you can be, short-term is telling you everything you need to know. Let's take a look at gold futures here. Uh, what we got down to our target at 1920, remember I said it would get here. Many of you said not a chance. It did indeed get down to 1919.50. So we hit our target, but this is a bearish picture here. Let's just zoom out on the five year. And what do you see if it does not hold support here? Now I do believe it can wrap Rally up and down off of the support level. That still tells me, you'll notice when it breaks that level at 1920, what to the downside, where does it quickly go? You're right, down to right here around 1820. That's the call. You find support at 1820. Now you've got a big bull case for gold. That's where I'd be targeting if you're looking for an entry point. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Stephen Van Metter. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.